Welcome to the Land of Unpopular Opinions, and today I will be doing a video that is not really booktube but I want to do it, and that is my Star Wars books collection plus recommendation on how to read them all, because some of them are a bit more complex. But this is obviously only my opinion. You can read them however the hell you want, <laughs> however the hell other people recommend it, because I have not read all of, all of the books that there are, and I probably never will. This is just all the books that I've accumulated and read over the last couple of years and how I recommend that you read them for the best enjoyment. So, let's get on in the video. The first book that I recommend that you read is First Darth Plagueis. I think this should be the first because, I mean, for the main series at least, this is how everything starts. This is Palpatine's story essentially, even though it's called Darth Plagueis. But this is Palpatine's beginnings, how he became a Sith. You really get some insight into what the Sith really want. My cat decided to pick this exact time to scratch. Great. This is the beginning of everything. This is how what the Sith want, what they plan to do, how it's all been passed down, and I think this is the great beginning. It's a little bit boring in the beginning because there's a lot of drivel and there's a lot of banking stuff that I didn't enjoy, but if you get to the juicy bits, the Sith and the stuff that happens in Coruscant, this is incredible. And when you realize how much it's actually woven into the main story because I'm not going to spoil it obviously but when you get to it you will see how much this is actually woven into the main Star Wars story so I think this is a great beginning but the next book is probably the only one that I'm going to recommend from Disney Star Wars because I despise them but Master and Apprentice this book is great if you love the characters that's all I will say if you don't really care for Qui-Gon Jinn or Obi-Wan you shouldn't read this but it's a great addition before the first book of the main story because you get to see their relationship and their dynamic and it kind of makes you care more when you get into Phantom Menace so I think this is a great addition if you like the characters if you don't I would skip it because there's a lot of Disney crap <laughs> in between and in the plot that really wasn't needed but if you like the characters I really really do recommend this next one is kind of going to be obvious but I still have to mention it and that is the Phantom Menace. I think this is obviously a great beginning. You can start here without the other two, but I recommend it because you really get into the depth of this one with the Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn prequel and stuff from Plagueis. You'll see why I am mentioning all of them together. I think this is really worth reading after that one. And this has never been my favorite movie. I don't think it's been anyone's favorite movie, but this book really has some depth. Like Terry Brooks, I mean obviously they got very very good authors for these books, but this is one that's in particular a lot better than the movie. So I do recommend it very strongly. And then obviously from there you can go on to Attack of the Clones by Ari Salvatore. And this book was incredible because it gives you emotional depth where you don't really get it in the movie. I'm not, no spoilers here obviously because this is the few things that aren't in the movie so I'm not going to spoil them for you but this was a treat for me and there was something that kind of made me upset extra but it really adds the stakes and it makes it even more heartbreaking so this is definitely a must read I mean obviously this is the main series so you have to read these but this is a very very good one so I wouldn't skip it if I were you or if I didn't like the movie the next one might not be as obvious because it's sort of a trilogy within the end of a trilogy, but that is the hang on, the Revenge of the Sith trilogy. This is actually a trilogy of books. So first we have Labyrinth of Evil by James Lucino. Then we have the main book, which is Revenge of the Sith by Matthew Stover. And then we have Dark Lord, Rise of Darth Vader, also by James Lucino. And I think all three of them are actually worth reading. I mean, Revenge of the Sith, obviously one of my favorite books of all time, movies and books of all time, but they're worth reading for extra depth to the plot because Labyrinth of Evil, I do remember it being a little bit dull, but it leads directly into Revenge of the Sith, so you sort of see what happens right before the beginning, and it has some more cool Obi-Wan and Anakin in it so it is very worth reading in my opinion I don't remember it that well but I do know that I had fun with it once it got past all the extra stuff that's boring 
but it's very good in regards of this being a trilogy so I do think it's worth it you can skip it but I do think it's worth it and then obviously Revenge of the Sith which needs no introduction the best book of all time the best movie to book adaptation of all time because Matthew Stover's writing I could just kiss it this is beautiful I don't recommend skipping it if you want to read Star Wars read this because it will make you fall in love with the prose and the world that the books just show you and this has so much depth and extra content and emotion and this book will kill you but it's incredible so do read it and obviously the last one of the trilogy which I read recently is Rise of Darth Vader this is directly after and it shows you how things came about after Anakin's fall so this is definitely a must read I think it's more of a must read than Labyrinth of Evil but I still recommend the entire trilogy this also has some boring bits but it's really incredible for Vader's personality and what's going on directly afterwards and how everything came to be and also the epilogue <laughs> my condolences because I cried at the epilogue but this is a very good continuation I think this trilogy is really good even though it's not supposed to be a trilogy like this is Revenge of the Sith wraps up the prequels but these really add to Revenge of the Sith so I think though you can skip them really don't because they're really good and they add extra layers and you really care about Anakin in the end if you didn't already which I did but if you don't want to read so much I definitely suggest this one over Labyrinth of Evil because I think that one is less essential but do read all three of them if you're in the mood. Next one that I think you should read if you're interested but I won't really recommend it and talk about it for too long is Ahsoka. You don't really get to care for her if you didn't watch the Clone Wars. So if you did watch the Clone Wars and you love it like me, I would skip this. <laughs> but if you know who Ahsoka is, sort of, and you don't mind Disney Star Wars, I would read it. But I really don't recommend it because it's not good. But if you want to, this is where you would read it. That I'm just mentioning it. But the next thing we have is the original Star Wars trilogy. This is the really fancy and really, really pretty edition. And I love it with all my heart. This is beautiful. It has like foreword from George Lucas and stuff. But I, this is probably my most cherished <laughs> copy of anything. Look, look at the end pages. They're gorgeous. And yeah, it has a prologue, introduction by George Lucas, comments before every book. It has a blue bookmark. This is beautiful. And I read the entirety of it last year. I think the original trilogy really surprised me because I didn't like those movies that much. Obviously I love them in the grand scale of things, but I didn't love them as much as prequels. This really made me love the original movies, so <laughs> if you already love them, this can only add to the love, and if you didn't love them, this can increase the love like it did for me. So do read the original trilogy because it's incredible, they always get excellent writers. It's kind of funny to see how inconsistencies because this was before the prequels, how they don't match up, but I loved it anyway. And there's a lot more time spent on some things that I wish the movie would have spent more time on, so I think they're definitely worth reading, and you should, to complete the entire Anakin Skywalker series. So this was incredible and made me care about characters I didn't even practically see in the movies. So this adds a lot of emotion, a lot of depth to Luke. It tells you how much time passed between each movie. I actually like Han in the books because I'm not a big fan of Han in the movies. And this was just very good, a very good addition. I'm very, very glad that I read it. And even though the prequels are my favorites, this definitely helped my love for the originals. Now, the next two, I wouldn't recommend, but at the same time, I would. And that would be the sequels. Now, here we have... Force Awakens by Alan Dean Foster. <laughs> this is where it gets a little tricky because I hate the sequels. Like, I hate them. I don't even acknowledge their existence. It ended with the original trilogy. But I do like The Last Jedi a lot as its own movie, so I think I can sort of recommend them. I will definitely recommend the books. This book, however, it's very short and kind of pointless because it doesn't add a lot to the movie like the others do. I feel like the books from the previous six are definitely a lot different than the movie. This isn't. This is basically the movie with a couple of extra lines thrown in. So I wouldn't really have to read this. But this one I would recommend. The Last Jedi book helped me 
because I was very angry when it came back from the theater watching The Last Jedi. This book helped. It helped a lot. I watched it three times in theater. I hated it. This helped because this actually added scenes to the movie that explained stuff. It added psychological processes that actually helped. It added explanations for certain things Ray does that helped. This really helped. There's also a great prologue. There's also pictures in the middle. This is a great book in general. This is the first Star Wars book that I ever bought and this is what helped me understand why novelizations are made because they make the movie better. I know the movies are supposed to be great on their own and some are but this definitely helped the movie. So if you had problems with The Last Jedi I would suggest reading this because this helped some of the problems. Not all of them. but This definitely helped me see The Last Jedi as the only movie worth watching in the sequel tri trilogy and even acknowledging its existence. So this is definitely a must read if you're interested in the sequels at all. If not, stop with the originals. I definitely respect you. But if you're interested in the sequels, I would read this. I think it's very much worth reading and it's beautiful and there's some really good scenes in here. So I definitely do recommend this one. Now the next two are sort of just collectibles. They're not really a must read, but they're just stuff that I have because this is a collection video. The next one is Heir to the Empire by Timothy Zahn. This is like, this is Legends, I think. This doesn't even fit into George's canon because it's very random and if I remember correctly, like Luke has kids here or I think Han and Leia have twins or something. This is just so out of canon, I haven't even read this yet. Someone gave this to me, but I do have it and I will read it. This is definitely not essential. And the next thing I have is this gorgeous collection. I'm gonna actually come closer for this of books, uh, Book of the Sith and the Jedi Student's Manual, which is very interesting to actually read through. So I will show you this. So in here we have the Jedi Path, which is sort of a manual for Jedi, and it has like different religious, so it looks like an actual notebook. And it has comments from all the Jedi younglings and masters, because like throughout the book you get comments. Like it's scribbled in and it's very fun to just flip through and see all the comments and see some fun, fun facts about the Jedi and what they can do. And this is actually very, very cool. So I would recommend getting this. I got it at the book fair, I think like last year when I found it, I bought it immediately. If you want to learn about the Jedi, this is really cool, really cool. And I haven't even read it all of it yet, but I'm just flipping through it when I'm interested. And the next thing in here is this sort of booklet with two photographs. Of like I think ancient Sith and the Jedi Wars or something like that. It's very cool. And the last thing is Book of the Sith which has like different colored pages. I don't know if you can see that. It has like black colored pages with this type of edge. It has this sort of notebook style. It has these red pages and in the end I think it has these sort of like random pages also scribbled on. So this, these are basically like notebooks and they look like notebooks. This is everything the Sith have to say about everything. Their history, how they work, what they want, their powers. It's actually very very fascinating. Here you have, I think, notes of Darth Plagueis when he was doing his experiments. And here the ending is Palpatine's sort of journal and how they work. So this is also a very, very interesting edition. Not as fun as the Jedi, personally for me, because they are not technically... They're secret, so the Jedi were actually more interesting in that period. But this is very cool, if you like the Sith. And I mean, <laughs> I clearly do. I think the other one is more interesting to read, but this is also very, very cool and I'm very glad that I have this box set in general because it's a gem. If you like Star Wars, I definitely would recommend getting this be because it adds so much to the world and it's very cool to read through. A book, this is just a little addition, but this is probably the only Funko Pop that I will ever have. I mean, I don't know, we'll see, but I have my little Darth Vader here. <laughs> he is so cute and I love him with his red lightsaber and look at him, he's adorable. He can hang out and I love him. He's just on my shelf over there which now looks pretty ugly because the books are usually covering it but just wanted to show him off a little bit. I'm not really into Funkos but 
this is definitely one that I needed to buy. That concludes this very, I uh, hopefully not too lengthy, but informational video about my Star Wars collection and how you should read the books according to me, of course, not no one else, <laughs> no one approved this or anything, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you definitely try it out because I think it could increase your love for Star Wars, which is something that I definitely strive to do. And do comment anything related to Star Wars below because I love it so much and I'm always up to talking about it. So I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.